Hey everyone, welcome to the Captain Drone YouTube channel. I'm going to back up so you can see what I'm reviewing today right here. This is the Turbo Ant X7 Max. What is this beast, you ask? Well, it's an electric scooter, a foldable electric scooter. Now, I did review the previous version of this two years ago, and it was called the X7 Pro. And I really enjoyed that scooter, so I wanted to get the Max. So here it is. Here is the Turbo Ant Max. So this one has a much longer range. We're over 50 kilometers in range, I think 30 two miles range on this thing and this one is foldable as well just like the last one you pull this little latch over here it opens up you pull down the handlebars they lock in the back and then you lift it it weighs 34 pounds to lift it and it's not bad it's uh one of those things where 34 pounds if you had to walk a mile it's pretty heavy but 34 pounds walking upstairs going in your office building going up an elevator to your office it's not very heavy so yes to get that extended range of over 50 kilometers well it does have a lot more stored capacity in the battery but it is 36 volts uh, 10 amp hours I believe oh and if I didn't mention it already this battery is removable so you put a little key in the side you pull the battery off then you can go charge the battery indoors or do like I do I never take the battery off I leave it on right on the bottom is where you plug in the included battery charger and I just charge it up that way but if you want to take the battery indoors and charge it indoors say you live in an apartment building or something you can now if you take a look at me <laughs> there's not much to me and I only weigh about 155 pounds so when I'm on this you know, I can get the advertised range. It's no problem for me to get 50 kilometers of range on this thing on a full charge. You, if you're over 200 pounds, you're not gonna get that. Speaking of weight, this deck can hold a rider of 275 pounds and still give you quite a bit of speed and quite a bit of distance. And if you're wondering about speed, it has three speed modes. So you have economical, uh, it's extremely slow. I would never ride an economical, but I'm gonna show you that here. It has comfort mode, which most people are gonna ride in on the scooter. And of course you have sport mode to go full speed and full speed is 20 miles per hour. Here, let me show you my test of it. Check this out. I just want to show you how windy it is out here today. Look at the trees. It's going to be a really windy ride. This is the first test. I'm going to check out the economy speed, the comfort speed, and the sport speed. And I do have a fully charged battery. I don't know if this camera picks it up, but down here, I don't know if it shows the battery is fully charged. So that means every test I do today, I'm going to do it on a fully charged battery. And by the end of the day, I'll see how much battery is remaining. All right, so I am in economy mode. This is designed for driving in the city so you don't run over people. I'm also going over a lot of cracks in the road. It's a really bumpy road here. So uh, the ride is not bad because I have the pneumatic tires. Now the top speed, I'm gonna tell you the top speed in miles per hour because I do have an awful lot of members in the United States that watch my videos and they love scooters. So I'm gonna leave things in miles per hour, but I will put the metric system on the screen as well. So right now I am cruising at full speed in echo mode at six miles per hour. So now you're wondering who's gonna drive six miles per hour? That's just a little bit faster than walking speed. Well, people driving on a sidewalk, which is pretty much illegal in most places, uh, if you're in a city downtown and you're cruising around a lot of people, you wanna go slow so you don't run them over. So this economy mode is designed for that. I'm in cruise control. If you leave the throttle down for a long period of time, it just carries on at that speed. So now I wanna stop it. So let's go and stop. So I'm on a main road right now, so I can go a little bit faster. I'm gonna turn on the headlight. It doesn't make much of a difference in the daylight, so I hold down the headlight button and the headlight comes on. And then the change speeds, that same button for the headlight, just double tap it. And now I am in comfort speed, so let's go. Comfort speed, a lot faster. I think this is what most people are gonna like, the comfort speed. So let's see what it gets up to here. Going, 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 I'm on full speed. So according to my display, uh, I'm in cruise control again, so I can let go of the throttle. According to my display down below, it says I'm at 10 miles per hour. So this is comfort speed. And uh, I think this is probably what most people would prefer. This is something I would probably use when I'm driving around obstacles. Uh, I'm going against the wind right now, but it's holding 10 miles per hour quite nicely. This is pretty decent. All right, I guess we should try the next one, which is sport speed. Okay, so double tap for sport. There we go, the beep has happened and now we're in sport speed. So we can go max speed now. 
Now, I don't have the throttle cranked because I have to get around a few obstacles up here. But I'm about to crank it. Looking around, make sure I don't hit any obstacles. There we go. So there we go, that is top speed. If you hit a big rock or a big hole at this speed, you're going flying. But if I look down, it says I'm at 20. 20 miles per hour. So decent speed, you will definitely get from point A to point B at a pretty good clip. Now to get up to that 20 miles per hour and pull the rider along, it does have the electric motor in the front wheel and it's a 350 watt motor. So is it a fast motor? Well, I don't, I can't exceed the 20 miles per hour. I've tried going down a hill and up a hill and I can't get it to go beyond 20 miles per hour. However, it says in the manual that it only does an incline of 15%. But I took it up a hill that is 15 up to 30% incline, and it did extremely well. Here, watch this. Coming up is the next test for the scooter. The specification says it can go up a 15% incline. I'm going to go up an incline that's 15 to 30%, and we'll see if it comes to a halt or does it keep going. So we're going up a little bit. Let me check my speed. I'm at 20. I'm just going to keep it going. I'm not going to stop going up this hill right around this bend come on don't don't dial me now scooter keep going come on here we go up this hill 17 come on I'm at 18 miles per hour Let's see if it holds at 18 going up this hill So as I mentioned, this hill is part 15% incline and it's also part 30%. I'm at the 30% point right now. So there's a little bit where it's at 30. And uh, yeah, it's starting to drop a little bit, 17, 18, but it's, it's holding, it's holding. Oh, is it getting, oh, come on, you can do it. I know it's steep here. Okay, we're gonna start to level off soon. So we should get up, back up to our speed. So at 17, we're almost at the last steep part here. 18, it's doing quite well. You know, that's not a bad hill back there. There we go. It did it. <laughs> we're pretty much at the top, we're at 19. Now I just want to take a second and talk about the deck size. So from the front to the back, you have about 19 inches where you can place your feet and across, well, maybe seven inches at the max you can place your feet. So if you want to stand with your feet together or your feet apart, like on a skateboard, it's plenty of space. Matter of fact, I made a little video showing the differences because some people don't know how to stand on a scooter. So watch this. Now the following is aimed at people who have never driven an electric scooter before because when I made my last video of the X7 and I drove it around, people asked, how do you stand on a scooter? So let me show you. Now the cool thing is the deck on the X7 Max is 19 inches long and it's almost seven inches wide. So there's a lot of room for your feet. And if you live in a city where they rent scooters, you'll see the people that rent the scooters usually ride a scooter as follows. They'll put both feet on the scooter side by side and and ride it around like this and try not to fall off. That is method number one. The second method is if you come from the skateboard world, you'll put one foot in the front and the other foot in the rear and you'll <laughs> drive it like this and I'll try not to fall off. I'm balancing on the stand here. Here, let me show you on the road the two methods. All right, so this is method number one with your feet side by side. This is how you'll see most people in a city riding. So there you go. It's almost like I'm on a Segway just driving along. You can balance pretty well with your feet side by side. And this is method number two. This is the skateboard method. I'll just slow down so you can see me as I go sideways. You'll see I have one foot behind the other. One thing I find above average on this scooter are the brakes. So in the back you have disc brakes and you have a blinky light that comes on when you put the brakes on, which is really good. And in the front you have an electric brake. And I will say, if you're going at super quick speed and you slam on the brakes, you're going to skid the tire. And if you hit a little hole in the ground, you're going to go flipping over the front because the brakes are really good on this thing. Next thing I want to do is try out the brakes. So I'm going to go this way. There's a little line on the ground right up ahead and I'm gonna slam on the brakes now. 
I have to lean back because these brakes are really good. So if I didn't mention it already, we have disc brakes in the back and electric brakes up front. The electric brakes is basically the motor. When you hit the brake, it causes the electricity to the motor to stop that hub motor from turning. Here I am coming down the road at 10 miles an hour and I'm going to stop in front of the camera right now. The back tire slides, left a little bit of a black skid, but uh, yeah stops really well and yes if you're looking today it's gonna rain any second it's really dull out while I'm making this video uh, the good thing is this is water resistant so if you want to take it for a cruise on wet roads or while it's raining perfectly fine another thing I want to mention is that for your money you're getting a quality scooter there's a reason I get the turbo ant brand and that's because they're quality so the construction is magnesium aluminum or is it aluminum magnesium alloy something like that there's not a lot of plastic parts on this thing everywhere you touch it feels metal there's a little bit of rubber down there but it's very solid so when you're driving at high speed over bumps it's a very solid feeling very secure 10 inch tires and the kind I have here I'll show you a picture of them well they're your basic 10 inch tires rubber tires you put air in them there's a tube inside very smooth very smooth ride however if you live in the world where you have to drive on dirt roads or gravel roads there's a good chance you're gonna get a flat tire so they sell honeycomb tires and I tried to buy the honeycomb tires because I had never tried them and I wanted a set for this but they were out of stock so when you look on the website you'll see the honeycomb tires those are puncture proof in other words you can put nails in them everything else and you'll keep on riding it's just the way they're built inside there's a picture here you can see there's sort of like a honeycomb shape holding the tire together so just like every scooter on the market they pretty much all have the same features and I'll go over them really really quick so you have your handlebars and if you turn them really really hard you can unscrew them and take them off they're just little grippy things so you could probably replace it with something else in the future if you want I have no idea. You have your thumb throttle here, which is very responsive. Then you have your power button to power everything on. Then you have your menu selector and you can select your speed modes as well as turn on your light as well as know exactly how much battery power is remaining. Next over on the left hand side, you have your bell and it sounds like this. And it is effective as you've seen in this video. Oh no, you haven't seen it in the video. Well, let me show you the part where I use the bell. It's very effective. So I think my preferred speed on this is about 15 miles per hour. It seems like it's a speed I like, especially going through the park here, through all these little trails. Let's try out the bell. Okay, the bell works. I did get that person's attention. There is a bell included with the scooter. Then over on the other side, you have your hand brake, and that is super effective. You will stop. And finally, with this brake, you have the blinky red light in the back to tell everybody you're stopping. You also have a headlight up front, and I will tell you right now, if you drive in pitch black on a trail, you cannot go in sport mode because you're going to outrun your headlight. The headlight does not shine far enough if you're on a trail with no lights. So you can drive in comfort or economical mode on a trail in pitch black with that headlight. Now, if you're driving under street lights, then you could drive in sport mode perfectly fine with that headlight and it shines the way and it lets other people know you're coming and the last thing i want to tell you is that there's a cool safety feature on this so say you have it powered on your scooter and you have your throttle control here you can push it as much as you want and your scooter's not going to move that's a good safety feature one of the great safety features on this scooter is if you push down the thumb throttle and I'm in comfort mode. It doesn't matter if I'm in sport mode or economical mode. It doesn't go anywhere. You actually have to move the scooter. And then it has to be going at a good clip. It didn't go there. Let me go about this fast. There we go. <laughs> now she goes. So uh, yeah, you have to be moving the scooter to actually ride it. You give it a little push and then push the thumb throttle and you're gone. As a matter of fact, my wife had never driven a scooter before, so I let her try this, and there's a little bit of video here. I pulled out my cell phone and filmed her, and she had no problem driving around. I let my family members as well take the scooter for a spin, and they had no issues as well. It's, it's very natural. Anybody who is a human with two legs can drive this scooter, no problem. Let's try out the brakes. There we go. Awesome. So the next thing I want to show you is how big the box is that this scooter comes in and how easy it is to assemble it. There's really nothing to assemble other than the following. So when you get this, you take it out of the box. You have to screw on these two handles. They screw on naturally. You have to connect this little brake. It screws onto the handle. That's about it. And they provide all the tools. There's nothing more. And charge up the batteries, put air in the tires, and then you're off. But uh, let me show you the box that came in and the assembly, my assembly. And then we'll get back to this. Watch this. 
This is the box your scooter arrives in. It's pretty much fully assembled. You will have to remove an awful lot of zip ties, so get yourself a really good box cutter. Thankfully, the scooter comes with a really nice side stand, and you'll probably use that as you're assembling the final pieces. Other items included in the box include the user manual, the key to remove the battery, and an Allen key to secure the brake to the handles. Speaking of the handles, you receive two of them and a box containing the battery charger. This is the back of the battery charger, so you can check out the specs. Assembly is super simple. Simply screw on one handlebar, slide the brake assembly over the handlebar stem, then screw on the last handlebar, then use the Allen key to tighten the brake assembly, then fill up the tires with at least 32 PSI, and finally charge up the battery, then go for your very first ride. You're back to me and you probably want to buy this scooter or any other scooter because you've been thinking of getting one. They're perfect for transporting you from point A to point B, but you're going to have to lock your scooter up. So let me show you what I've been doing. I have one of these. It's a bike lock and let me show you how it works. So I take this lock and I thread it through the back wheel at any store or shopping mall I'm at. And then the other end connect it around the bike stands that are at every shopping mall. This will stay locked. You don't have to worry about your battery. Nobody can steal the battery because it's locked with the key. So you keep the key. You can be pretty much guaranteed nobody is stealing your scooter, that's for sure. So with all that said, this ends my review and I will say the following. This scooter is sometimes on sale and sometimes there's discount codes. So check the links below this video. It will take you to where this scooter is sold. You might see it on sale and there might be discount codes there too. So you might want to check it out. All right, guys. So with all that said, I'm ending this review because I think rain is coming. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have questions on the scooter, just post them below. There's not much I can tell you that I haven't already told you it's pretty darn good but for now I say thanks for watching this scooter review and I'll catch you in a future review when the sun comes out and I can do some more product reviews until then I say bye